I just can't believe car makers won't sell me cars. It's, it's gotten to that point. No, it hasn't, please. How are you guys? So I don't know why, but there's been a lot of rumors out there on the internet where people say, oh, Alejandro can't buy any cars from Ferrari, Lamborghini, Pagani, whatever. I just want to make one thing clear. I can get anything I want. I can pretty much walk into any dealership today and buy whatever I want. No one has blacklisted me. There's none of that stuff. But most importantly, this video is more about staying true to yourself because it's been a long time coming. There's so many car vloggers and reviewers that weren't even reviewers back in the day that became car reviewers and I feel like the car world has gotten a little bit out of control with all the bullshit we hear from everyone. What do I mean by that? Everyone wants to be in the good graces of all the car manufacturers, right? There's no denying that there's some kids that are getting the cars from directly from the manufacturers and they're telling you, my god, this is the greatest car ever. And really, is it? because you're getting the car directly from the guy that's telling you what to put in that video. So I don't think so. I'm just going back to like the un like the uncut raw version of the truth. So let's get into it starting with the only company that I think actually will not sell me a car. Let's talk about Koenigsegg first. So what exactly is Koenigsegg known for? Koenigsegg is known for making the fastest car in the world. That's what everybody knows Koenigsegg for. How are they doing today? I think Koenigsegg's doing fantastically well today. They have a lot of great cars uh, that they've sold out. They have a lot of cars in the pi pipeline that they're gonna be killing it with, like the Jesco. And that puts them in a great spot in today's market, especially compared to the other smaller car companies like themselves. So how are they gonna be doing in the future? I think Koenigsegg's gonna be doing really fine in the future. They just acquired Saab, so they're gonna be able to create more cars. They're gonna go into more products. That means they're gonna come out with cheap cars they are gonna come out with more cars there's gonna be more models they have a bright future ahead of them there's no doubt about that what is the best thing that they do I think the best thing that they do is two things one straight line speed they're incredible at it no one can touch them you saw what they did against Bugatti you saw that they hold the record to go from zero to like 400 and then back to zero by a lot so that's the best thing that they do the other great thing that they do is develop new technology that no one has ever seen. That's what Christian von Koenigsegg is a genius and known for because he can do stuff that nobody else can. But that also takes me to what is the worst thing that they do. To me, the worst thing that Koenigsegg does is the R&D, creating all these new things that don't have really a life and use. For example, the Regera. The Regera is a car that has like that gearbox that doesn't have any gears, right? And the Regeras are always at the shop. No matter what anyone tells you, they live at the shop getting fixed. So how is that exactly a bad thing? So they developed this transmission for the car that has no gears. And then you go out with a Jesco and then put a seven clutch transmission in the car. When are you gonna develop something that's gonna continue to go on and be perfected, like the PDK system that Porsche has, for example? I think that is the worst thing that uh, Koenigsegg does, and their cars being not that reliable, because they're always in the shop, because it's all technology that's insanely brilliant, but also not sustainable with the amount of money they have for R&D, and for how long they, that technology lives, and uh, how long they've been on the market. That is the worst thing about Koenigsegg. Am I interested in buying a Koenigsegg? I honestly, I am not entirely sure yet. We'll see what the future holds for them but but again that might be the only company that might not sell me a car the reason why simple uh all of the owners just get together and they're like let's make our car value go up so let's not have anyone find out the truth about these cars because they do break down and they're still kid cars there's nothing more special than in a pagani they actually break down more so there's that. On to the next one, and the next one's gonna be Ferrari. What is Ferrari known for? Ferrari is known for building the most gentleman car or sports car that is an investment. Everybody knows that if you buy a Ferrari, you're gonna make money, or at least that's what everyone has in their head, right? So that's what Ferrari is known for. How is Ferrari doing today? I think Ferrari's a little stagnant right now with all of their lineup. They haven't done anything that's completely mind blowing in today's market. Nothing that's been released has been completely like, whoa, I can't believe you came out with that. There's not a single car that does any of those things. But also you have to understand, Ferrari has the biggest and largest clientele of the most influential people on earth. So they're never gonna be going anywhere as long as they put a little bit of effort into it. How is Ferrari gonna be doing in the future? I think Ferrari has a bright future ahead of them because they, I feel like they just woke up. 
with that SF90, the hybrid with the three electric engines that is gonna be around $600,000, $700,000 with a thousand horsepower, they're showing that they wanna catch up and pass everybody else as far as the technology goes for everyday sports cars. So I am very excited about the future of Ferrari because now they're waking up. Now they're really trying hard. And that's what I wanted to see for years and years and years from Ferrari. What is the best thing that they do? The best thing that they do, aside from how great their car sound and how good the designs look, but that's honestly unique to each person. I think the best thing that Ferrari does is how they manage their brand and how they're able to keep the higher end cars as investments and they just keep appreciating towards the long term. That is by far the best company at doing that right now. So Ferrari is killing it with that. What is the worst thing that they do? The worst thing that they do is, is a lot of dirty shit. It's like the, the Ferrari Mafia, right? Like you all saw the roll back, uh, rolling back the miles. I mean, it was a huge story. Nothing ever came out of it. Everybody says, you know, the rumors on the internet that there's way more cars than the ones that they're saying that they're making. So if they're saying, oh, here's 499 Enzos, everybody knows that there's more Enzos. So that lying to their customers and lying to people to preserve value, face, brand if that makes any sense i think it's the worst thing that ferrari does today am i interested in buying one i am absolutely interested in buying that sf90 and whatever comes out next i really am excited about those and obviously there's some older cars that just as an investment in just the way they look and the way they they feel i like so ferrari Ferrari's on an upswing right now and I love it and also clearly i'm in different clothes because i forgot to mention lamborghini i can't it's my bad, I'm so sorry. So Lamborghini, what is Lamborghini known for? Lamborghini is known for the most radical, unapologetic designs of any regular production car maker. That's what they do. Incredible designs like the Aventador with the scissor doors. They were the original, in my opinion, the original supercar maker because nothing else has ever looked like a Lamborghini until basically now. So that's what they're known for. How is Lamborghini doing today? That's a great question. I think Lamborghini, after the acquisition from VW Group and everything, all of the technology that's trickling down from those cars to these, they're doing better than ever. The proof that I have for you guys is the Huracan Performante and the Evo. They're phenomenal driver's cars. They sound incredible. They feel amazing. The steering is on point. The cars literally shift so fast from one side to the other that it feels like they're sharks in water. So it's beyond recognition, this brand. How are they gonna be doing in the future? Knowing that everything is happening right now for Lamborghini and knowing that they have a hypercar that's gonna be electric or maybe a hybrid with the Unico. I'm not entirely sure if the code name already changed. They're gonna, they were gonna make like either 64 or 83 cars. I can't remember. It's gonna be brutal. The new Aventador that's rumored to have a hybrid powertrain, a V12 and a battery producing 800 horsepower. That's gonna be madness with a dual clutch gearbox. Finally, that is the only thing we were missing from Lamborghini. So the future looks very bright for them indeed. What is the best thing that they do? I really do think still bringing those unapologetic designs to the everyday, everyday production car is what separates them from everybody else and the noise that their cars make, obviously. So those two things are exactly what is putting Lamborghini in the next level of car making. What is the worst thing that Lamborghini does? I think the worst thing that Lamborghini does, and this is honestly not bad at all is they're a little too Audi and some people might get into an Urus and go well why would I spend two hundred and forty thousand dollars when I can buy this for half the price and they're right in a way but listen if you want the bull if you want the sexiness inside and outside you go Lamborghini so I don't think their bad is really that bad and now am I interested in buying a car from them absolutely absolutely i try to get that hypercar and obviously i was denied i understand why there's so many people that have so many legendary collections of lamborghinis that is beyond me uh, i wanted to get an svj 63 i couldn't get it and i'm still struggling right now whether or not i should buy an svj before buying my hypercar i'm not I'm not entirely sure. Why? Because if I get the hypercar, I'm gonna sell the SVJ, and I don't think it's gonna be worth the hit, but at the same time, that SVJ really gets my dick hard. So, yes, maybe. The next brand is Aston Martin. So what are they known for? Aston Martin is known for the ultimate gentleman's car. I mean, James Bond drove their cars all of his life and still drives them with the new James Bond movie. So, gentleman cars, kind of like what Ferrari does, that's what they're known for. How are they doing today? I think Aston Martin's one of those stories that's just mind boggling. How are they doing today? They're doing better than pretty much anyone else. They came out with a whole brand new lineup of, car, of cars that is fantastic. And that partnership with Mercedes and, uh, and Red Bull Racing has been incredible. They went from having old cars that just looked nice and sounded amazing 
being like the best, greatest, and value for the money is insane. So Aston Martin's killing the game right now. How are they gonna be doing in the future? I think the future is exactly what we're seeing with the Valkyrie, with the Valhalla. The future is very bright for Aston Martin, and especially, again, with Mercedes and Red Bull Racing and how they're doing in Formula One. There's a lot of future to this company. They have a lot of vision. They've gathered the right amount of people for themselves. They're absolutely killing it with design, with performance, and uh, also with innovating. So. I think their future is really, really bright. What is the best thing that they do? The best thing that they do is like those designs along with the sound and the materials inside. You won't see a car that's that loaded with carbon fiber, beautiful leather and beautiful everything anywhere else. I think that's the best thing that Aston Martin does right now. What is the worst thing that they do? The worst thing that they do is, I'm, I'm gonna be a little silly here, is taking all of the technology from Mercedes from a year ago. Every car that has Mercedes technology from Aston Martin, which is every single one, is using a year old technology because Mercedes has obviously the, the preference and they're gonna use their own technology first and then they're gonna trickle it down to Aston Martin. So the worst thing that they're doing right now is just uh, you gotta wait maybe two years to get what, what is the greatest in Maybe they're never gonna be up to that standard with that deal, but they're getting there. Am I interested in buying a car from them? Absolutely, and especially the Valhalla, if that's the name of the car, the little 003, the small Valkyrie. I'd really like to have one, which is the, their, their own rendition of what the McLaren Senna is in that sector. So Aston Martin, amazing things. On to the next one. And we're gonna be talking about McLaren and I'm sorry that I'm smiling already. So what is McLaren known for? Oh boy, firing their cars and also for making the best road fastest uh, feeling cars in the, in, the, in the world right now. I think McLaren is one of the most exciting companies out there, aside from the fire scandals and all that good stuff. How are they doing today? I think today they're, uh, they're growing at a crazy, crazy, crazy fast pace that's in a way not letting them put out the best product possible because they're rushing through production to make the most cars possible. So that's why there's a lot of fires, Senna fires, uh, 570 fires, speed tail fires. I believe that that's the problem. The quality control is just not there for a brand that has such a bright future. How are they gonna be doing in the future? I am a little concerned with McLaren because I do think their technology and everything that they've been doing to the cars is phenomenal. Only Porsche can match them. And that's a big thing to say for a company that's as young as McLaren is in today's world with their new lineup, of course. Not talking about the F1 and McLaren in Formula One or anything like that. I'm not entirely sure they're gonna be able to perform unless they take that quality control and they also start treating people like human beings. I think that's gonna be the make it or break it for McLaren. How are they gonna be doing in the future? I don't know. That's a 50-50 for me because they really need to change their ways and they're acting like Russia back in the day with Chernobyl. They're just like, no, 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 human error, human error. Like, take accountability for your shit in all senses because all of your cars have these problems of uh, just rushing them to the production line. And just start doing that and you'll be perfectly fine. But will they stop? We don't know. So how's their future? I don't know. What is the best thing that they do? The driving feel of those cars and how fast they are. It's literally, they're, they're the only ones that can do what they do. That's the best thing that they do. What is the worst thing that they do? Quality on their cars, again, like we said, and also the way they treat people and the way they treat their own employees. I've, I've had numerous McLaren people that used to work at the company telling me, this is why I left McLaren. It's not right the way they treat people. It's not right how they treat employees. It's not right. So uh, I think that's the worst thing that they do. Am I interested in buying a car from them in the future? I, I, I don't know because I do love them. I do think they make the greatest road, like the greatest road cars that feel the most amazingly on the road, that drive so great, that excite me the most. The problem is the company within itself. So I think McLaren's doing all right as long as they just start listening to people and acting like people are human beings that, you know, that have feelings and that want things, they'll be all right. But onto the next one, which is one of my favorites of all time, Porsche, what is Porsche known for? Porsche is known for precise engineering. They, their engineering is bulletproof. All of their cars are phenomenal, phenomenal cars. They're like precision knives. They're the ones that have been evolving the same car for 50, 60 years without really having a radical change in it because they just keep improving on it. That's what Porsche does. It's very German, very German. How are they doing today? I think today Porsche is doing fantastically. They're upping their production numbers on every single one of those limited cars. They want to get cars to every single person that wants 
to buy one. That's why the GT2 RS was not a limited number car. That's why they made a production car and they just put it out for everyone. And yeah, while the value of the car is depreciating, everyone that wanted one could have gotten one that could afford the car, obviously. So I think Porsche is doing fantastically great today. How are they gonna be doing in the future? They just invested in Remac. They bought 10% interest in that company, Remac, one of the most innovating companies as far as electrical goes. So I, I don't see Porsche going or falling off anytime soon. I think uh, they're a company with vision. They're a company really well run. They're a company with great customer service. Even when they fuck up, they'll take care of you. So I think Porsche has a bright future ahead of them. What are the worst things about Porsche? I think they're making so many cars and there's not like a good ladder of command. There's not like a good place where you're gonna say, I want this car and they put you on the list and they really could honor that because they're a little bit all over the place. That's why there's so many orders that come in and they're a little fucked up and you know, they didn't give you the right wing, the, uh, the carbon fiber seats ran out, like all of that stuff. I really feel like even though they're amazing at producing these cars, they're not so amazing at production of the cars and staying on top of who gets what and why. That's, I think, their, their biggest downfall. Am I interested in buying a car from them? Of course I am. I think their new hypercar is gonna be phenomenal. I just hope it's more than just the concept too because the rumor is that it's gonna be an all-electric hypercar. So if that's the case, I just hope they don't Batista this one with a concept two. And by that, I mean, they just don't reskin a concept two and they do a little bit more work. But knowing Porsche, I don't doubt that that's what they're gonna do. So uh, Porsche, good for you. On to the big boys, Bugatti, Bugatti, what are they known for? Bugatti is known for giving you the biggest, baddest, freaking engineered car in the world. Something that's bulletproof that you can use every single day and that is faster than anything you've ever seen in your life. And also, white glove service. They are the top of the top, la creme de la creme, if that makes any sense to you guys. Uh, the, you know, the cheese I put on my tacos. So they're, they're at that level. <laughs> How are they doing today? I think Bugatti's doing better than ever right now. With their new car, they didn't improve performance crazy. All they did is worked on improving every single little bit of that the Bay Run was and making it bigger, better, and better. And I think that's exactly what that company needed. With the addition of Winkleman coming into the team, the CEO of the company, and really, really taking it to the next level and understanding what would excite people to get. And Winkleman brought the one-off special into uh, Bugatti. So just like he did with Lamborghini with all the special editions, he brought it into here and now he's doing the Devo. There's gonna be a brand new special edition car announced uh, at Pebble Beach. There's gonna be uh, the 110 year old anniversary car. Every single reiteration of the car is being special. And what they're doing really well is they're capturing that market of repeated customers because they have all the money in the world. So it's like, I wanna have the regular one. I wanna have the sport one. I wanna have the Devo. I wanna have the next one. And I, it's just brilliant. I think it's brilliant for what they do. It doesn't need to be a new car. It is the greatest car ever made, made and engineered from driving it. So I don't think they need to do anything else. How are they gonna be doing in the future? I think they're gonna be doing perfectly fine. And the reason why is they're backed up by VW Group. And, and right now with what they're showing, with what they can do and what they do in today's market, no one, no one can touch them. I, I see a lot of promise in the future. It's gonna be a hard transition to, towards electric. I'm interested in seeing that, but I do feel like Bugatti, just simply based on how they pivoted themselves back in the day into what they are now, they're gonna be doing fantastically fine. What is the best thing that they do? The engineering of the car. It's a car that has 1500 horsepower that you can drive every single day, period. It's flawless, it's magic, it's incredible. What is the worst thing that they do? I think the worst thing that they do is not making a car that I can afford. <laughs> That's it, they're so expensive, they're so expensive. I think their pricing is the worst thing that they do. They're a little too expensive and they take forever to appreciate. That is the only thing I'd say that they, they're not good at and also maintenance costs. Wow, they're insanely, insanely high, but also you're getting something engineered at the level that they are, kind of makes sense. Am I interested in buying a car from them? Absolutely, absolutely. Absolutely, people. And now onto a familiar face, Pagani. What are they known for? Pagani is really known for beautiful designs and an incredible family-like customer service. That's what they're known for. How are they doing today? I think Pagani is doing okay today. They pretty much sold out all of their cars, but at the same time, all of the new cars that are coming out, and you know, they were the ones that put in the map the two million, three million dollar car for real, other than Bugatti. But there's a lot of them for sale right now. I think uh, they're going through a little bit of a weird transition in time because 
they're not really technologically savvy or ahead of everyone and that's where it's going to be interesting for us to see where they go with it how are they going to be doing in the future there's a rumor that they're going to go electric with a car so i think they're going to be fine as long as they really stick to that and that really comes true because who else can coach build you a car like pagani nobody nobody and the level of attention that horatio and his kids and everybody at the factory and everybody from pagani gives you is bar none the best by 800 billion miles i think as long as they do that and they keep that going they're always going to be fun what is the best thing that they do so the best thing that they do is uh, aside from their beautiful designs customer service there is no one that will take care of you like pagani nobody from going to the plant and, and inspecting your car with horatio the emails that you get the pictures the way horatio talks about the cars and it makes you fall in love with the brand and, and with everything about it i think that's the best thing that they do the worst thing that they do i think they have a lot of kinks in their cars that they need to figure out which is, you know, like the AC, the electrical, the, the, the batteries of the cars, because if you leave it overnight without plugging it into a trickle charger, chances are your battery is going to be dead in the morning. I think as long as they solve those little problems in their next iterations of the car, they should be perfectly fine. Am I interested in buying a car from them? That's an interesting question right now, because with the market the way it is right now, how fast it's falling in general, and seeing how many Paganis are out there, I do think a Pagani is going to be a really, really wise investment in the next six to six months to a year. So we shall see. The next company I want to talk about is Mercedes-Benz. I know it's completely different from everyone else because we're not going to talk about BMW, for example, but Mercedes-Benz is developing a hypercar. They're in Formula One. They're coming out with cars kind of like the 911 range. So they are getting into that market, whether we like it or not. What are they known for? Mercedes is known for basically putting the most money into their cars. That's what they're known for. If you're getting an S-Class, you're gonna get so much more car compared to a BMW 7 Series. If you're getting a Project One or an AMG One, you're gonna get Formula One performance with everyday capabilities, which is insane because if you look at the Red Bull One, it's kind of like a flap instead of a door that you have to jump into. And if you're fat, God bless you and good luck. So uh, that's what Mercedes is known for. How are they doing today? I think Mercedes is doing better than ever today because their cars are incredible the way they sound the way they perform they're getting better and better with their chassis uh the interiors are to die for and honestly with everything they're doing with the amg gtr the amg gtr pro the convertible the amg one and everything else they're showing us that they're ahead of the curve that they can do stuff for way less money than everybody else and it's still a reliable workhorse so that's what mercedes is killing it with how is Mercedes going to be doing in the future? The future for Mercedes is so bright, and especially right now with everything that's coming out for Formula One, the AMG One, and uh, these, these cars. I don't doubt Mercedes is going to be around forever. They're a company that has always prided itself in improving and improving and improving itself. I don't see how that's going to stop right now. I mean, they're showing me that they're going after Porsche like crazy, knowing that they were the standard. So. Mercedes wants to become the standard, and that's going to be crazy. What is the best thing that they do? Bringing extreme performance to everyday usability. Literally, my AMG GTR, there was a time when I didn't turn it on for like two months. I was able to open the door, get in, turn it on, no problem. No other supercar and company like that can give you that. And I know it sounds lame and just too simple, but it's very hard for you to be able to grasp how amazing that is in that world. So. Uh, I think that's what they're killing it at. What is the worst thing that they do? I think the worst thing that Mercedes is doing, which is not bad, is they haven't really gotten to a lineup of supercars, super sports cars. Yeah, they have it with the AMG GTR, but it's not out there. There's nothing that competes with an 812. There's nothing that competes with the million dollar cars. They just went extreme with the Project One and also very, very cheap and affordable for what he does with the AMG GTR. So I think that's the worst thing that they do, that they haven't really come out with a big lineup in that level, but I think they're phenomenal and they're gonna get there. Am I interested in buying a car from them? Uh, I've had like 70 of them, so yes, I'd say so. <laughs> love them, love them. And last but not least, Remak. What are they known for? Remak is known for making the fastest hypercar ever and it's electric. They were the first car to ever beat the Porsche 918 on a quarter mile race. And that is an impressive feat from someone that was, at the time when I met Matt Remak, the owner of the company, 28 years old. And he made that car, he made that company. 
So that's what they're known for. How are they doing today? I think Remak is doing better than ever. They've gone to, through uh, either two or three rounds of investment along with Porsche acquiring 10% of them. And also they're helping everyone like in the Valkyrie. They're the ones that created that battery in the Valkyrie. I don't know how many people know of the where they're using their batteries anywhere else. So I'm just gonna keep my mouth shut. But there's a big, big want for what they do. And I love that Matt is killing it. And I think the future is really bright for Remak. So how are they gonna be doing in the future? I think phenomenally, specifically considering that uh, VW Group is now sourcing parts from them. You know that they're gonna be killing it when the biggest car company on earth is asking you for the latest and greatest in electric. So congratulations, Mate. The future looks really bright. What is the best thing that they do? Electric components for cars and also software. That is the best thing that they do to the point where everyone is just making a hypercar and using their base so that they can just skin the car and go with it. So that's the best thing that Mate and Rimac do. What is the worst thing that they do? They just don't have any regular cars for production. I think they need to start getting into regular cars, kind of like what Tesla is doing. I, I would like to see that more. Why? For the simple reason that you're going to log a lot of miles and you're going to be able to understand cars a lot more with more case studies. I think that's the worst thing that they're doing and or missing out on. Am I interested in buying a car from them? I am. I think they're phenomenal, but also let's be real. The Tesla Roadster is going to be 10 times cheaper than their car. So I am not entirely sure if they're gonna be, there's gonna be a 10 times value in their car, but we shall see. Nothing is for, for sure, nothing, uh, we don't take anything for granted. That was the last one. I feel like I just ran a marathon. I hope you guys understood everything that I just said. I hope you guys liked it, and let's always keep it real, you know? Well, uh, let's just, let's just fucking keep it real.